you're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Well, you might as well sit down and take it easy, Ken. Unless the Bureau's called in on it, our hands are tied. Not a thing we can do. Yeah, I know, Chief. Two million dollars worth of radium. And somewhere between here and Manila, the stuff's going to be hijacked. I'm sure enough to bet on it. Uh, what time's the plane scheduled to leave, Ken? Oh, around 5.30 this afternoon. It's a charter line, so they don't have any set schedule. And you uh, say there'll be other passengers besides this uh, Don Louis Roof? Sure, three or four already. The flight's wide open for anybody who wants to buy a ticket. They're not even using a private plane. Oh, you'd think anybody with enough ability to run the radium supply agency would have the intelligence to realize what a chance he's taking. Dr. Mosley, it's not his intelligence, Chief. It's his attitude. He feels we're unduly alarmed. Oh. Of course, his responsibility is finished as soon as he turns the stuff over to Don Louis here in New York. And Don Louis doesn't want any protection either, eh? Considers it an insult to suggest it. Ugh. I suppose you told Mosley about Chief, the... Chief, uh... I used every argument I could think of. I told him that in spite of his secrecy, the whole underworld knows about the shipment. That Mr. Coco, probably the smartest international crook in the world, is supposed to be here in New York right now. And for one reason, to swipe that radium. Mr. Coco. I told it. Oh, well, what's the use? Uh, I know how you feel, Ken, but unless they call us in, it's simply not our job. If this thing were a private deal, I'd say, all right, let them pay for their cockiness. But it isn't. This shipment's being donated to the clinic by public subscription. Money kicked in by hundreds of citizens here, as well as in the islands. They wanted to go where it'll do some good. And I hate to see people like that let down. Well, I can't see how we can... Pardon me. Sure. Hello? Oh, oh, put him on. Yes, that's right. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Why, of course, we'd be glad to. Right, right, Ken Thurston. We'll take over immediately. Goodbye. What's up, Chief? That was Don Louis Roof, the man from the Commonwealth Clinic. Uh-huh. Somebody tried to tap his phone line at the hotel. Now he's plenty worried. Wait, you mean... That's right, Ken. He's yelling for help. Good. That's all we need, Chief. We're in it. Mr. Pagan Zellschmidt, Esquire. Who's talking, please? Is this the Zellschmidt who's a friend of Ken Thurston, the man called X? Huh? I mean, most likely you have the wrong number. I never even heard of anybody like Elsewhere. that. Hmm? If you're the right guy, I'm ready to send you $100 by messenger. So, I'm very sorry, I... Uh, Zelschmidt, huh? I want you to take a message to Mr. X. Tell him if he wants to go on living, he'd better keep his nose out of this radium deal. Otherwise, my agents would be forced to eliminate him. Got it? Right. I shall go find him immediately. As soon as the money gets here, of course. You'll go now. Get the money later. Apparently, you don't realize who you're talking to. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've had the pleasure, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh... I'm sometimes known as Mr. Coco. But this fellow is a very dangerous character, Mr. Thurston. If we get to this plane, maybe he's going to bump you off. Then what? In that case, Pagan, you'll have to carry on by yourself. Well, I would be only too glad... Huh? I'm not going. As a matter of fact, I just this minute remembered an appointment, though, or something. It's probably that hundred bucks. You'll be in seat five, Pagon. I've already bought your ticket. But, but... Uh... Pagon, you wouldn't let a close friend go into danger by himself now, would you? No, wouldn't I? Uh, Mr. Thurston, I only came to warn you. This Mr. Coco is not only a criminal crook, but he's also a very tough cookie. And he means business. Then if he gets us, we'll go together. Friends to the last. Oh, do, 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 don't say such uh, things. I beg your pardon, gentlemen. Huh? Uh, since we seem to be fellow passengers, permit me to introduce myself. I am the Baron Irving von Wolf, uh, at your service. Hi, right, Baron. My name's Ken Thurston. This is Mr. Zellschmidt. Uh, <laughs> gentlemen, uh, I wonder if either of you know the reason for this delay. We should have departed three minutes ago. I believe they're waiting for another passenger, Senor Roof from Manila. Uh, 
highly inconsiderate of him. We should have been here on time. You seem to be in a pretty big hurry to get to San Francisco. Are you going on business? Oh, oh not at all. I do not engage in business, Mr. Turston. I find the income from my baronial estate quite adequate. Mm, you're lucky. Oh, dear. Say, ah, we're being honored. Here comes the princess. Princess? Friend of yours? Oh, I met her a few minutes ago and found her most charming. Yeah, you can tell that from here. Uh, pardon me, Baron Wolf. Uh, do you know why we are being held up? Oh, there's another passenger, so Mr. Thurston tells me. Uh, uh, Princess uh, Katushka, allow me to present Mr. Ken Thurston and uh, uh, Mr. Zellschmidt. <laughs> I am honored. You going on this plane, too? I am, at any rate. Mr. Zellschmidt isn't quite sure yet. <laughs> Never any question. Oh, Princess. Uh... Along with Senor Roof, then we seem to be the passenger list. Is that right? Oh, there's one man already on board. I'm told his name is Dave. He's been asleep in his seat ever since he got there. <laughs> he snores most dreadfully. Well, I think I'll go on board. I will come with you, if I may. I hope we see a lot more of each other, Mr. Thurston, uh, during the trip. Oh, yes, yes, I'm sure of it. Uh, then, for the present, au revoir. Uh, we'll see you on board, gentlemen. Mr. Thurston, I'm like a new man. Recapitulated, huh? What a luscious little chipmunk. Chipmunk, eh? It could be. At any rate, she's probably not the Princess Katushka. You mean she's only pretending to... Hey, what's all this? Probably our prize package, complete with police escort. Yep, here comes Don Louis now. Pagan, take a good look at that briefcase. It's worth a couple of million bucks. Good evening, Mr. Thurston. Sorry to be late, but we were delayed by traffic. You know Dr. Mosley, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. How are you, Doctor? No trouble so far, then? Not a bit, Mr. Thurston. In fact, I'm inclined to believe the incident at Senior Ruff's hotel was pure coincidence. It had nothing at all to do with the radium shipment. Well, that's possible. Shall we go aboard, Senor Ruff? Uh, I uh, wish you the best of luck, Don Louis. It's been a pleasure to deal with you, sir. So you're not going with us, Dr. Mosley. We have some pretty unusual people on board. I doubt there'll be a dull moment in the whole trip. Mr. Thurston, looks like we're going to land. Uh, what is this place, anyway? Kansas City, Pagan. Probably stopping for gas and a quick checkover. Uh, did you say Kansas City, Mr. Thurston? That's right, uh, Princess. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Um, quite a cattle industry here, I understand. You interested in cattle, Baron? Mm, only in a general way, Mr. Thurston. I have a large number on my stage, you know. Mm -hmm. Which reminds me, uh, maybe I could get a hamburger here someplace if I had some money, of course. No question about it, Pagan, if you had some money, of course. Oh, well, doesn't matter. After all, I did have something to eat yesterday. A small crust of dry bread, as I remember. Or was the day, the day before yesterday? All right, here. Buy yourself a sack full of hamburgers. And while you're at it, send this wire to the chief. Mr. Thurston, I'm stricken with gratitude. I shall do it immediately. Well, wait till we land. Huh? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, oh. oh, Mr. Thurston, what is this? We're landing? That's right, Don Louis. Short stop at Kansas City. You had quite a sleep. Well, you may consider that an indication of my confidence in you, Mr. Thurston. I felt most secure. Thanks. That's more than I feel. Something has happened? Not a thing. That's what bothers me. Well, they seem to have arrived. Part of the trip's over, at any rate. I hope you're not too disappointed at the lack of trouble so far, Mr. Thurston. Not disappointed. Only surprised. This is Kansas City. We'll be here about an hour, so you'll have plenty of time to get out and walk around. What's the trouble, pilot? How come an hour? I'm only the co-pilot, mister. The home office radioed to us to wait here for another passenger. Coming in on the commercial liner from New York. Oh? Yeah, wait. Aren't you Pete Colon? Yeah. You read the newspapers, too, huh? Well, you did get quite a lot of publicity. Why not? When an heiress makes the kind of claim she did. Said I married her for her money, threatened her life, had homicidal tendencies and a criminal mind. Who wouldn't get publicity? Yeah, I guess you've got something there. Well, Don Dewey... Light to get out, take a walk? Yes, yeah, an excellent idea. Uh, maybe somebody ought to wake up Mr. Davis. Might want a hamburger or something. It's amazing. Except for the little time at Cleveland, the man has slept through this entire trip. Well, perhaps I'd better tell me we landed. Uh, Mr. Davis? Mr. Davis, you up. Remarkable accomplishment, being able to sleep that soundly. Hey. Good heavens. What is it? Man isn't asleep. He's dead. <laughs>
Look, Mr. Thurston, here comes your friend now. Apparently he hasn't deserted after all. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Pagon, what the Sam Hill have you got in all those paper bags? Oh, hamburgers. Well, you only had five bucks. Must have taken most of that for the telegram. Oh, that? I sent it to collect. Uh, here, have one. No, thanks. Go ahead. I've got plenty of them. Twenty-five, in fact. I, I thought I might get hungry in the plane, you understand? I see. Mr. Thurston, do you think we'll be held here because of Mr. Davis's death? No, Don Lurie. We'll probably take off right away. Our new passenger was supposed to be on that liner that came in a few minutes ago. What do you think was the matter with him, Mr. Thurston? His heart, maybe? No, Pagan. I think he was poisoned. What? But you mean because of this? That's right, Don Lurie. Because of what's in that briefcase. Davis was the crook who used to run the Christmas gang. I recognized him in New York. But he'd never even glanced at it all during the trip. Hadn't got around to making his play yet. But somebody on board decided to cut down the competition. Poisoned him. Oh? What's this about someone being poisoned, Mr. Oh, Baron. I was telling Senor Roof that the late Mr. Davis was undoubtedly poisoned. But that's so silly. Who could have done it? Any number of people. Our co-pilot, Pete Colon, filled the water bottle at Davis's seat. I believe he had a drink with you, Baron, when we stopped in Cleveland. And I saw him eat some candy mints that you gave him, Princess Katushka. But there was no reason. Uh, none of us even knew the man. Of course not, Princess. Mr. Thurston, here comes somebody. Maybe the new passenger, huh? Yeah, yes. Well, this is quite a surprise, Dr. Mosley. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Don Louis. Dr. Mosley. I suppose this does seem a bit foolish, but I found your apprehension contagious and decided to come along as far as San Francisco. I caught the next... Oh... Well, hello there. I beg your pardon? Oh, sorry. You don't know these people, do you? Princess Katushka, Baron von Wolf, Dr. Mosley. But I... How do you do, Dr. Mosley? A pleasure, Princess Katushka. Well, I'd better get aboard. I've delayed you enough already. Perhaps you should all get aboard. An excellent suggestion, Don Louis, unless you object to traveling with a poisoner. That's according to Mr. Thurston's theory, of course. As a matter of fact, Princess Katushka, I've got more than one theory. Really? Such as? Well, one of them is that you may be the Princess Katushka, and again, you may not. Oh, how interesting. And as far as Baron von Wolf's concerned, I seem to remember a celebrated jewel theft in London some years ago. The defendant used that name. <laughs> a remarkable coincidence. However, we do seem to have a certain advantage over you, Mr. Thurston. How's that? Because I am quite sure that all of us are aware of your real identity. Mr. Coco. Continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Mr. X has watched the briefcase of radium like a hawk ever since the plane left New York. But so far, no direct attempt has been made to steal it. Right now, the plane is making a brief stop in Denver, Colorado. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Hey, what happened to Senor Rupp? Nothing's happened to him, Pagon. He's sitting over there on that station bench, exactly 31 feet away. Why? Oh, nothing. Except I always become very uncomfortable when I get close to a couple of million dollars. Uh, here's a telegram from the chief. How do you know who it's from? I'm very glad you mentioned that, Mr. X. You see, it's the humidity. The envelope came unstuck. I see, yeah. Keep, on, keep an eye on Don Louis for a second. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Height about five feet six, age 37, dark complexion, black curly hair... Teeth, no visible fillings. Weighs some but Mr. Thurston, pounds. there is nobody on board like that. Yeah, so I've noticed. Look, somebody's talking to Don Louis. Yeah, Dr. Mosley. Hmm. Now he's picking up the briefcase and setting it down again. What is he trying to do anyhow? Hard to tell, Pagan. Attention, all passengers from charter plane to San Francisco, please come aboard. Come on, Pagan. Oh, uh, maybe I should have stayed in New York. Only when I saw that princess, what's her name, uh, who... How could I know she was only a cold fish? Cold fish? Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. Well, Dr. Mosley, you practicing weightlifting? Thurston? Oh, uh, I didn't hear you come up. I, I was just telling Don Louis here, this uh, briefcase must get uh, pretty heavy. All the uh, lead shielding in it, you know. Yeah, I suppose it does. Yeah, well, I was uh, just uh, going to carry it to the plane for Don Louis. Oh, I wouldn't think of letting you go to all that trouble, Dr. Mosley. Here. 
I'll be only too happy to carry it. Shall we go, gentlemen? Where do you think we're now, Mr. Thurston? I don't know exactly, Pagon. We're out of the Rockies. Somewhere over the desert, I guess. And the next stop, San Francisco. Ha! Not only does Mr. Coco doesn't show up himself, but he doesn't even have any agents like he said he did. Strictly one big bluff. I thought you'd all like to know we're running dead into a pretty bad storm. Gonna bear off south and try landing at Rock Rim Emergency Field. Oh, uh, Mr. Colan. Yeah, Mr. Thurston. What's on your mind? I was wondering why we didn't wait this out of Denver instead of heading on into it. Would have if we'd known about it. This one came up unexpectedly. Um, now, Mr. Colan. Yeah? I happen to see a copy of that storm warning the field dispatcher handed you in Denver. I'd hardly call this unexpected. <laughs> Good heavens, you can't see anything in this dust. We'll get lost. we better stop. Ah, huh. the building's over this way. Oh. If I know anything about the desert, there'll be a rain behind this wind. Oh. It's a very good thing I bought those hamburgers in Kansas City. <laughs> Fourteen left. Maybe I can make a little profit on it. Here, over this way. Here's the door to the field office. Ah, detestable climate, I must say. Nothing like it on your estate, Baron. Ah, there's shelter, at least. That's a relief. Hurry up, everybody inside. I want to keep the sand out. Oh, well. Isn't there anyone here? The place seems deserted. Yeah, it does. Hello, a note from the attendant here on the oh, desk. Yeah. In event of any plane being forced down here, entire facilities are at the disposal of the personnel. I intend to be gone three days, servicing flight beacons on the mountain range at the west. Well, yes, there there seem to be bunk rooms of some sort along the hall back here. Probably living quarters in the rear, they usually are. Uh-oh, the phone's dead. Oh, there's a rather nice lounge. Well, whatever it is, it looks like it's ours for the night. We're stuck here until morning at least. Ah, eight people and two million bucks. This might turn out to be quite a night. Oh, would anybody like to buy a nice hamburger? Only 75 cents. What's the matter, Princess? Insomnia? Hmm? Oh, you startled me, Mr. Thurston. I didn't see anyone sitting there. Well, you may as well make it Ken, since we've come this far together. Sit down. All right, Ken. Of course, that leaves me still wondering what to call you. You still think I'm an imposter, don't you? Aren't you? No more than you are. <laughs> Touche. I suppose our little friends are all tucked in safely. I guess so. Rather surprised at you letting Don Louis out of your sight. You followed him around like a shadow. A good reason for it. Well, of course, you know about that. I can guess. Ken, why do you dislike me so much? I don't. I've been avoiding you because I think you're dangerous. There's a big difference there. Dangerous, Ken? In what way? Well, the way you said that, for one thing. And the way you're looking right now. How am I looking? Let's say, um... Uh, desirable. That covers a lot of ground. I don't go so much by just looking, Ken. No more do I. So, where do we go from here? San Francisco. Oh, that's for tomorrow. How about tonight? Tonight? That settles that question. Ken, those were gunshots. That's right, baby. No, no, you stay where you are. Mr. Thurston, that noise. Oh, it woke me up. What happened? I think it's a safe bet that somebody shot somebody. Yeah, well, shot uh, me but we've got to do something. Where'd it come from and who was it? I believe I can answer that question, Dr. Mosley. Please stand where your arms, Mr. Colin. Don Louis. Well, Colin, that's quite an arm you've got on you. I don't think he's wounded seriously, Mr. Thurston. I'm something of an expert with a pistol. How did that happen, Don Louis? I woke up to find Mr. Colin going through my luggage. Since he had a knife, there was no other choice than to shoot him. Well, it's fortunate you woke up. Otherwise, he'd have had the briefcase. It's too bad Mr. Thurston was so engrossed out here in the lounge. Oh? I thought the shots woke you up. Well, at least you weren't where you should have been with Don Louis. No. No more was the briefcase. Well, that's... Where is it? Under those cushions there. You've been sitting on it for the last five minutes. Oh? 
Since I was quite sleepy, Mr. Thurston was kind enough to take over my responsibility for a time. Uh, Mr. Thurston's well known on two continents for that sort of kindness, Don Louis. Hello, Baron. You always wake up with a brandy bottle in your hand? Oh, it's so much excitement. I thought a drink might be in order. Uh, I've even found glasses. How about one all around? Hmm? Excellent suggestion. You can count me in. Well, here we are. Just a moment. Mr. Thurston, what's that gun for? Suppose we wait for our host to drink first. Well, Baron. Uh, all right, put that gun on them. We can make a deal, Mr. Coco. Coco? But Mr. Thurston is the man called X. Mr. The Baron's been under a misapprehension. And I'll take that bottle now. I think it'll probably hang you, Baron Wolf, for the murder of a man named Davis. But, Mr. Thurston, think of the humiliation for the honorable name of Zellschmidt, traveling up here with all these bad characters, and your gun pointed at my back. Why can't I sit with you and Don Louis? Pagan, for all I know, you may be one of Mr. Coco's agents. Mr. X! I swear by the father of my oh, father Oh, skip that... it. Anyway, you're a petty profiteer. 75 cents for a stale hamburger. Stay right where you are. How long will it be before we reach San Francisco, Mr. Thurston? Oh, I'd say about half an hour, Don Louis. Plenty of time to make connections with the clipper. I'll tell you one thing, Mr. Thurston. As soon as I can get in touch with the proper authorities, you're going to be very sorry for this treatment. What's wrong, Dr. Mosley? Aren't you comfortable? <sighs> Treated like a common criminal. A man of my position. Relax, Doctor. Colon and the Baron are in a tougher spot than you are. They're not doing any squawking. The stakes were big enough to take a chance, Thurston. When you lose, you lose, that's all. Quite a philosophy. You and the Baron should have worked together. How do you feel about it, Princess? I'm not a princess, and you know it. I showed you enough credentials to prove who I am. Sure, sure you did. Helen Bartlett, magazine feature writer. That was a new role, wasn't it? It was not a role, it's the truth. I admit it was a fool idea, but I had to get an inside story on this radium deal some way. Dr. Mosley backs me up. Yeah, I've noticed how willing both of you are to support each other's claims. Now look here, Thurston. You look here, Dr. Mosley. Thousands of people in this country kicked in money to send this radium to a Philippine hospital. All I care about is making sure it, it does go there. Compared to that, your little troubles don't mean very much. Is that clear? Mr. X, do you think one of these suspects could be Mr. Coco, maybe? Maybe. <laughs> Which one is it? That's a good question, Pagan. Which one do you think it is? Well, that looks familiar. You mean the clipper, Don Louis? No, the wharf there. That's where I first landed, coming over from Manila. Well, I guess we may as well see you aboard. And you ought to have a pretty quiet trip from here on. Well, at any rate, Mr. Thurston, it's quite a relief to be vindicated finally and see the proper criminals put into custody. Yeah, it's been quite an experience. From a dangerous femme fatale to a suspect to a bona fide magazine writer all overnight. Helen, you'd be dangerous anyway. But you still show me San Francisco tonight in spite of it, won't you, Ken? Uh, well, here we are, Mr. Thurston. Yeah. Nice view across the bay. Yes, yes, it is indeed. Now I may as well take the briefcase... Mr. Thurston, neither I nor my people can ever thank you enough for your protection on the trip from New York. That's very generous of you, Don Louis. As I said before, my one interest in this affair is to make sure the radium gets to its destination. Those customs guards there, they have the same idea. What? Why? Those rifles are pointing at us. Oh, no, no. Not us. Every one of those rifles is pointed straight at you, Mr. Coco. <gasps> I seem to have underrated you, Mr. Thurston. How did you find out? Your gun first, please. Thanks. Well, it was your top coat. You threw it across a seat in the plane, and I happened to notice a label. Gonzalez de Taylor Manila. But, but Don Louis was from Manila. Around yes. it was a line of tiny pinpricks where another label had been ripped out. So I wired the chief for a description of the real Don Louis roof. You didn't fit it, Mr. Coco. But, Mr. Thurston, I dealt entirely with this man. He presented all the necessary credentials. What happened to the real Don Louis? Well, Mr. Coco, any answer there? We'll find him all right. And when we do, I think we'll find a few bullets fired from this gun. And that ought to make a pretty tight case. Now that I come to think of it, Mr. Thurston, I thought this fellow's voice sounded familiar. Yeah, he's the one who called me on the phone. Here you go, have another hamburger. Well, I don't mind if... Huh? Well... Yes, they're all such fools, Ken. They never see it before it's too late. Helen, 
Any man's a fool when he sets himself against humanity. That's the real man without a country. If such there be, go mark him well. For him no music's rapture swell. As a fool he lives and blindly dies, finding death his only prize. It's a beautiful sunset there beyond the Golden Gate. Except for one dark shadow from that rock on the right. Mr. Coco, that's the rock they call Alcatraz. Frigid Air star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, our story is called Run, Thief, Run. And right this over because there's plenty of action and suspense in it. As usual, there'll be Leon Belasco along as Pagon Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. And so until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Thursday, for the best in entertainment, Tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.